Hey friends, it's Mr. Lester. Are you ready for another snacking story? You know, fall's here and it's a great time to go apple picking. And that gave me the idea to read Apples to Oregon, which tells us a little bit more about how apples made it all the way across the United States. Come on, let's go. Apples to Oregon. Being the slightly true narrative of how a brave pioneer father brought apples, peaches, pears, plums, grapes, and cherries, and children across the plains. My daddy loved growing apples. And when he got ready to pull up roots and leave Iowa for Oregon, he couldn't bear to leave his apple trees behind. So Daddy built two of the biggest boxes you could have ever hoped to see. He set them into a sturdy wagon and shoveled in good, wormy dirt. Then he filled every inch with little plants and trees, hundreds of them. Daddy was ready for the most daring adventure in the history of fruit. Apples ho, he cried. Along with the apples, my daddy took peaches, pears, plums, grapes, and cherries. Oh, and by the way, he took us along too. We had lots to do on the journey. Each morning I helped mama bake biscuits while daddy prepared for another long day on the trail. At night, Mama and I tucked in the little ones, then Daddy fiddled lullabies under the stars. Why, I can still hear him crooning to the grave scenes. Hush, little babies, don't you cry. Mama's gonna bake you in an apple pie. If that apple pie ain't sweet, Daddy's gonna munch you for his own special treat. We rolled along just fine till we came to the Platte River. It was wider than Texas, thicker than Mama's muskrat stew, and muddier than a cowboy's toenails. Just looking at it made my insides shrivel. The riverbank was crowded with folks and prairie schooners trying to get up the nerve to cross. When they saw us and our little fruit trees fluttering in the breeze, they burst out laughing. Those leaves will be brown as dirt before you hit the plains, declared one old geezer. Plains, scoffed someone else. That nursery wagon won't make it halfway across the river. But Daddy didn't let their talk worry him. He just looked me up square in the eye and said, Delicious, I'm going to need your help. Right then and there we built a raft for his tiny trees. Then Daddy loaded me and my little sisters and brothers onto the edges. Now, make sure my precious plants don't topple into the water, Daddy warned. Well, we hadn't gone far when that muddy drink started to pull us down. The peaches are plummeting, my sister shouted. The plums are plunging, boomed my brothers. Don't let my babies go belly up, howled Daddy. We had to think quick. We're too heavy, and if we don't go faster, we'll sink. We gotta take our shoes off and kick. And so we kicked. Of course, we'd all been raised on apples, and everyone knows youngins raised on apples are strong, mighty strong. Before you can say Johnny Appleseed, we'd kicked ourselves clear to the other shore. But no sooner had we got every last tree loaded back in the wagon that I spied a foul-looking bunch of clouds stomping round the sun just fit to be tied. The wind began to throw around everything that wasn't lashed down. Our boots, baby Albert's diapers, every pot and pan Mama had, even our own little wagon. Next, hailstones big as plums came hurtling out of the sky. Guard the grapes, protect the peaches, Daddy howled. So we all started tearing off our clothes and holding them over Daddy's darlings, bonnets, petticoats, trousers, hats, even Daddy's drawers. Whew. At last, the storm passed, and Daddy's dainties were safe. After all that excitement, it felt good to hit the trail again, but before long, we came to an endless sandy desert. Now remember, us youngins didn't have our wagon or our boots. In no time, our feet were redder than the poison apple the old witch gave to Snow White. Delicious! 
This is our toughest challenge, said Daddy, wiping his brow as I followed him on tippy toes. We got to find a water hole or my babies are done for. Sure enough, by noon, the fruit trees began to droop. By three, their itty-bitty tender leaves were getting crispy. By nightfall, Daddy was crying, a handful of dead branches pressed against his heart. I couldn't bear to see my daddy suffer, so early next morning I took off to look for water. But although I searched and searched, I couldn't even find a splash or a puddle. After a while, I got so tuckered out, I plopped down under an old sagebrush. Ouch! I yelled, landing on something hard. But when I saw what it was, I whooped for joy! My very own boot! What's more, I still had some water in it from all those melted hailstones. That was our lucky day, let me tell you. We found every one of Mama's pots and pans spread out across the sand. They had all just a few drops of water in them too. Just enough to get Daddy's trees to the next water hole before they all keeled over. My, that first sip of water sure tasted good, even if I didn't have to wait my turn behind some Baldwin apples. Oh, and I'm pleased to say our wagon and all the boots turned up too. All except one. I reckon that nasty wind blew my left boot clear to the other side of the moon. And if it should ever happen to drop out of the sky on your head one of these days, I'd sure appreciate you sending it along to me. Well, we kept going along. Past Courthouse Rock and Chimney Rock and Independence Rock and lots of other rocks that didn't have names. We climbed up the rocks and down rocks, and at last we reached the Columbia River. Just a hundred miles to go, declared Daddy. But time was running out. Our little trees had almost drowned in the river, got pounded by hailstones, and got withered by drought. How much more could they take? And now we were set for a showdown with the most ornery varmint of all, Jack Frost. Oh, I already spied him sneaking around our campsite, brushing the cottonwoods with his cold white tongue, but I wasn't about to let him get close to my daddy's apples. So that night I made a big fire and sat by it, waiting for Jack Frost to show himself. Sure enough, as soon as the moon came up, I spotted that old good-for-nothing slinking around across the meadow, heading straight for the sweet Junes. I got ready to fight. Jack Frost came at me, turning the ground so cold my toes went numb. But I didn't give up. I grabbed a flaming stick and threw it right at him. Before you could say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pretty pippins. That low-down scoundrel was hightailing it out of there, heading straight for Walla Walla, Washington. I'm mighty grateful, Delicious, said Daddy, as he scrutinized his sweeties the next morning. Thanks to you, even the sweets stayed snug. We were nice and cozy, too, added Mama, checking the children. Sure enough, all Daddy's trees survived, just as if they'd come across the plains in a swanky carriage. We floated them on boats down a mighty Columbia to a pretty place near Portland. Then we planted them in that sweet Oregon dirt at last. Gold was discovered in California not long after, and thousands of people rushed there to seek their fortunes. But not us, we already had our fortune. Those apples, peaches, pears, plums, grapes, and cherries made us richer than any prospector. We were happier, too. After all, apples taste a whole lot better than gold. As for my daddy, he was always sweet as a peach. He and Mama lived happily to a ripe old age. Daddy never forgot my brave deeds on the trail. Why, as soon as he sold his first bushel of apples, he bought me the prettiest pair of boots you've ever saw. Delicious, said Daddy, you'll always be the apple of my eye. The End